Hi. Hi. So this used to be the part two of the previous video I did of reworking Genshin's elemental resonance system. However, with uh, the script in my head not matching the recording time, it would have been easily 40 minutes. So here's a part two, and I hope you enjoy this one because this one's quite fun. I really enjoyed this one uh, where, you know, you have some interesting concepts to add to the resonance system instead of reworking it, so I guess it works out for a second video anyway. So make sure you like, subscribe, and give me your thoughts in the comments below if you enjoyed and all that. So thanks for watching, and also I'm sorry for talking so much, it's a 30 plus minute video, so you clicked on it with that knowledge in mind, so <laughs> either way, enjoy. With the previous video being over 20 minutes, <laughs> this one will easily be that same number because there's a lot to talk about. Mono element resonances. If you think about bringing three of a single element like Geo, now think about that for Hydro, Pyro, and all the other elements. So let's get started. I'm going to first talk about kind of what drove my thought process to make this a reality. Granted, yes, this was a inspiration from, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, Vars' video on elemental resonances and what could be changed to make it more interesting. I just simply thought, you know, adding three to four of the same element can create new layers of customization and allows you to have this whole fantasy of mono element, your favorite element being viable in most or all situations so that you can feel like you're more powerful with no elemental reactions or little elemental reactions. On top of that, the three and four mono element resonances that I've made are slightly different. They benefit either an elemental reaction focused comp or the whole element that the resonance is about. And, and don't worry, they will become more clear when I get through them. Now, for these resonances and what they include, the reworked two resonance bonuses that I made in the last video will mostly carry over to these resonances. Unless mentioned, these two element resonance bonuses stay the same, otherwise they may be buffed a small bit with three or four. The descriptions of three to four mono element resonances simply build off of each other the more you add characters from that mono type, and like I said before, there are some differences in the 3 versus 4 type, so stay tuned for that. And finally, I will just say most of these descriptions are long, so I hope you can read, and please don't even get me started on that, because Genshin Impact's artifacts, weapons, and abilities are much worse in their length and long trailing off descriptions than this. These are quality descriptions and effects that I'm really proud of, so please don't make Link the criticism, please. Thankfully for you and everyone else, I've made it easier to read in chunks where these resonances have at least one triggering effect that corresponds to either elemental reactions or elemental damage based on their element. So. The trigger effects will be broken up into little sections, so don't worry, I will make sure that it's easy to read along with me. And a final short disclaimer, I am a passionate and creative individual who is self-studying game design. None of these are perfect, but I feel like I'm hitting close to the mark when it comes to these, so my vision's there. So don't bash me by saying that you could do it better. That's my spite-filled creativity to corporations. They don't have feeling- Alright. <laughs> with all that said, Let's have fun and get started. Now let's do a little guessing game when it comes to each of these mono resonance elements. So we're going to start with Pyro. What do you think Pyro characters need? Time's up. The answer is nothing. Okay, I'm half joking. I'm half joking. But if you think about it, Pyro characters are offensive and that is the name of the game. So all they need is more offense, which they kind of don't really need, but it does help them. However, I will say there will never be another pyro healer quite like Bennett without sacrificing something like damage or whatever. So what do you think pyro needs? A better way to heal themselves if they don't use Bennett or they might have Bennett on the team and maybe need a little bit more healing. So this also helps maintain damage and their damage buffs. 
And so just so you don't comment something that I already know, this resonance would not be amazing with Hu Tao. Why would you use a lot of pyro characters with Hu Tao anyway? She needs to be the one doing the damage, right? So this is a niche only for pyro characters that focus on mono pyro or other types of reactions. So let's get started. The three pyro resonance is pyro based elemental reaction damage is increased by 25%. And the trigger effect is pyro elemental reactions now leave a small golden patch of flames on the ground. These flames heal allies for 2% of their max HP every 2 seconds and increase their attack by 20% and grants 15% pyro damage bonus while inside the flame. This healing attack bonus and pyro damage bonus lingers for 3 seconds when outside of the flames. These flames individually last for 12 seconds once triggered, and the cooldown of creating these golden flames is every 3 seconds. Now again, I'm going to talk about my reasonings for this after I talk about the 4 Pyro Resonance, so stay tuned. The 4 Pyro Resonance is just simply a triggering effect. The older effects from the other Pyro Resonances mostly carry over, but the triggering effect is slightly buffed and different. All pyro damage triggers golden flame patches that are now a 5 meter large square and last for 6 seconds when created. Healing is increased to 5% HP every 2 seconds and adds a total of 30% attack and pyro damage bonus. Once the flames expire, they explode with an 8 meter pyro damage AoE, decreasing pyro resistance on the enemy by 40%, healing your character for 25% of their HP, and granting a 50% attack bonus that lasts for 5 seconds. This golden flame pyro damage from the explosion is based on 300% attack of the pyro character who created that specific golden flame. This effect can be stacked with other attack boosting sources, but can only be refreshed. The cooldown of creating golden flames is every 3 seconds. Now for all 4 mono bonuses, um, for the resonances, there is a elemental shield break bonus, because <laughs> you have no other elements to break shields, so I wanted a way that all these elements can break shields in a very unique way, but at different rates, you know, it, it's the Genshin after all, there has to be some uniqueness. So anyway, the elemental shield bonus for the Pyro Resonance is all elemental shields can be melted by the golden flames as long as they stand in the area, dealing damage to the shield over time. So to sort of explain my reasonings for this briefly, um, the patches of grass as a visual are the same as lighting grass in the overworld, just as, you know, one little patch or a 5 meter square of patch with the different resonance bonuses. So. It gives extra area denial and stuff. So that's my Pyro Resonance. Very straightforward. It just needs, you know, some healing and some area control and extra damage. So <laughs> I think it's a really perfect resonance for our Mono Pyro Arsonist Klee, right? So pretty simple stuff. And you may have noticed from my old Toma Theory video, which did not come true, <laughs> I gave some of the old area denial and controller effects to this Pyro Resonance to give justice to what we could have had as our Toma, but it's all right. He can have it in the team that he's a part of. So there you go, Pyro Resonance for Mono Pyro of three and four Pyro characters. Before I move on to Hydra Resonance bonuses, I will say that if the Ocean Hued Clam artifact set didn't exist, I would have immediately used something that would be healing equals extra burst of damage kind of thing for this Resonance bonuses nearly just like it, but I do have a little difference that puts a unique effect on it, so I changed it up a little bit. So anyway, here's what I worked on for Hydra Resonance. First off, what do you think Hydra needs? <sighs> Did you guess HP? HP? And more HP? Oh yeah, that's a big one. That's, that's, uh, that's definitely what Hydra needs. <laughs> but I also kept the healing hybrid of the Hydra element with fun bonuses to healing bonus and scaling different stats into damage. So this trigger effect for these resonances was something I thought about a very long time ago um, with, you know, popping bubbles and stuff, so I wanted to rework it in a certain way. And I tried not to step on Mona's toes, but it's different than Mona's open. You'll see. So here's my mono Hydra resonances. The three Hydra resonance is Hydra-based elemental reactions are increased by 30%. You can see that this is a pattern. 
The first triggering effect is triggering hydro-based elemental reactions creates a hydro bubble ring of six bubbles around the active character that circles around them for 10 seconds. Think about this like the, you know, the special hydro abyss mages that have the weird buff that has bubbles around them, but think much smaller. If enemies get caught within this bubble ring, one bubble is consumed and captures the single enemy, marking them with the wet status, and this bubble can be popped to increase the next hydro elemental reaction damage by an additional 30%. This stacks on top of the already 30% bonus, so 60% for one hit. Vaporize. Anywho, this effect also has electrocharge lasting for 6 seconds longer, which will be enhanced by the extra 30%, by the way, and frozen reaction lasts for 2 seconds longer, and additionally decreases hydro resistance by 30% for 5 seconds. The second triggering effect is pretty straightforward. I could have put this one first, I don't know, but here it is. The hydro elemental reactions also increase maximum HP by 2.5%. A maximum of 20% extra HP can be gained in this way, and 30% of HP now additionally scales into extra damage. Notice extra damage, which is flat on top of every other damage. It's not a damage bonus, just so you know. The HP bonus can be refreshed, but the bubble ring cannot be refreshed until the effect expires. It's pretty important. Now on to the 4 Hydro Resonance bonus. The elemental skills of your characters now have a flat 15% chance to have its cooldown reset when they are activated. This trigger happens first if there are any weapon or character passives that also reset elemental skill cooldowns, like Sacrificial. And it additionally decreases Hydro Resistance by 30% as long as the wet status is on the enemy. Now for the first triggering effect, remember what I just said was just a passive. I did kind of mix match these triggering effects, so I'm sorry they're not in order, but the first triggering effect is all hydro damage now increases maximum HP by 5% of every hit of hydro damage, with a maximum of 30% HP that can be gained in this way. 40% of HP now scales into extra damage bonus, and 40% of healing bonus now additionally scales into hydro damage bonus. Perfect for those catalyst healers. And the second triggering effect is Hydro Damage now has a 30% chance to create a Hydro Bubble Ring of 6 bubbles around the active character that circles around them for 10 seconds. If enemies get caught, the one bubble is consumed and captures the enemy, but this bubble can be popped and deals true damage based on 20% of the maximum HP of the enemy caught. So there's some unique little true damage and HP mechanics with Hydro. Again, this HP bonus can be refreshed, but the bubble ring cannot be refreshed until the effect expires. Now for the elemental shield break bonus, I'm sorry if I skipped it before, but all elemental shields that are attacked by hydro damage now create a bubble surrounding that enemy and deals 30% of the shield's maximum HP as damage after it pops. This bubble cannot be created again for 5 seconds after it is created. So this bubble effect from Hydra Resonance, as you can see, is much different than Mona's Burst and the Ocean Hued Artifact Clam. Um, the Clam Artifact Set? Whatever. Um, this one allows for Hydra characters to deal a similar type of damage to the Ocean Hued Clam Artifact Set. Somehow, if you happen to pick all Hydro Catalyst users or Infusion characters, these bubbles are directional in a six sort of triadic direction and are consumed when one enemy touches that bubble and increases that damage or does true damage. So this adds sort of a little protection effect with a lot of enemies maybe surrounding you. Also, these bubbles do indeed surround big enemies, but they don't stun them like Mona's Omen does, so it just kind of slows them down or whatever it does, you know? That same effect. So yeah, I just gave it a bunch of healing bonus, HP, and bubbles. You know we love bubbles. <laughs> I pretty much took inspiration from Abyss Mages, so yeah, I know, it's it's samey, whatever. Um, oh, and I also forgot to mention, the elemental skill damage can be very important uh, the reset, I mean, for long skill cooldowns, which are literally every Hydro character, like Child, Xingqiu, Kokomi, and it makes you go full damage instead of using sacrificial weapons, like for Xingqiu, you can run Jade Cutter. So yeah, and since Yelan was added, I think she would be a really strong candidate for this 
Hydra Resonance effect, where she can be maybe a little bit more flexible for the four Hydra damage teams, you know, and still do a lot of damage, and her passive where she gains HP, negligible. It doesn't matter. You just get a bunch of HP anyway. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Hydra is one of my favorite elements. It's my second favorite element, so I talk about it a lot. Anywho, let's move on to Electro. What do you guys think Electro needs? Time's up. Did you say more damage? More energy recharge? Burst damage? Maybe a Shogun-like passive? Yeah, sure. All of those things, sort of. Plus a little extra special trigger that will make a character like Beto even stronger. Oh yeah, I heard some of you squeal in delight when I mentioned Beto. I know you. I know you. Alright, well let's get to it. So the three mono element bonus resonance for Electro is Electro based elemental reactions are increased by 50%. Energy recharge is also increased by an additional 25%. The triggering effect here is triggering electro-based elemental reactions stun enemies for two seconds and place a chain lightning circle around them. Hitting enemies with electro damage causes this chain lightning circle to burst forth and jump to nearby enemies, stunning them as well. This chain lightning's damage is based on the triggering electro character stats with a 150% skill damage multiplier. This chain lightning can also trigger elemental reactions, and multiple enemies can chain lightning to a single enemy multiple times. The cooldown of the same chain lightning triggering once per enemy is every 6 seconds, so basically 6 seconds after the initial stun trigger. Okay, pretty simple. Now for the 4 bonus, um, or 4 mono element, it's a little bit more spicy. So energy recharge is increased by 30% and increases electro damage bonus further by 20% of the active character's energy recharge. Ho ho. All elemental damage triggers a chain lightning circle on an enemy that jumps to nearby enemies when triggered. So basically the same thing. And the chain lightning can decrease electro resistance by 10% up to a maximum of 50%. So definitely use this as AOE like crazy with Beto. This chain lightning can trigger elemental reactions and multiple can hit an enemy at once, blah blah blah. So the trigger effect 2 is all electro damage has a 15% chance to decrease the cooldown of elemental bursts by 2 seconds. I probably should add that there should be a cooldown of at least 8 seconds to this, but mm, it's fine, we're just having fun here. Just imagine that I put that in there, whatever. And the elemental shield break bonus is enemies that have electro shields, or elemental shields that have a chain lightning on them, explode, dealing 20% of that shield's health every 3 seconds and deals electro damage to nearby enemies. So kind of that little chain lightning thing, but just dealing more damage to shields. So yeah, these resonances may be a little harder to make realistically because of that skill damage multiplier, but most of these are a bit complicated anyway, so I think it could be possible to at least reuse assets somehow. This Electro Resonance captures the fast nature of Electro without it being about attack speed. So it's more on the multiple hits of reaction damage or multiple hits over time. So, you know, we don't want attack speed to be busted for only Raiden and barely anyone else. You could use a different Resonance for that, which I will get to later. But instead, you know, I enjoy how Electro is about spreading Electro everywhere like an Electro web and dealing a lot of elemental reaction damage or just multiple hits of Electro damage. It's very multi-hit. Like think ka -ching. she does a lot of multi-hits with her burst, so I very much used her as kind of an example here. Electro technically now has made its identity also as a mono element, so I wanted to explore that a little bit with, you know, big reaction damage potential and multiple hits. So team synergy with one Hydro or one Pyro character would be quite fun with Electro Charged and Overloaded, so think about all that. Think that would be fun. Now on to Cryo Resonance. Oh, uh, it's 20 minutes. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you clicked on this video, you're interested. All right, anyway, what do you think Cryo needs? Absolutely nothing. I didn't even give you time to think, and I mean it. It needs absolutely nothing. It is way too powerful of an element. However, I altered its identity a little bit, and I think that's the best we can do. Since crit as an identity, and being supportive, and being heavily damaged, are so powerful, I added a special new niche that it could have. 
physical hybrid damage with the integration of better shatter elemental reaction mechanics. Oh yeah, I simultaneously am fixing shatter reactions while making a fun mono cryo resonance. A win-win in my book, but you know, if you still want that shatter damage video, I'll do it, whatever. So here's my mono cryo resonance. These ones are a little bit more simple, so I'll just get through it. Cryo elemental reaction damage is increased by 25%. When frozen, decreases the defense of the target frozen by 30% and increases crit rate further by an additional 20% when attacking a cryo applied target or a frozen target. So I would say this is just a buff from the reworked resonance that I did. So it went from 10 to 20, not 10 and 20 making 30. So just keep that in mind. The triggering effect is at the end of the duration of Frozen, the enemy Frozen will be dealt Shatter Damage. Once Shatter Damage is dealt, decreases physical and cryo resistance by 25% for 8 seconds. All Shatters have a 20% chance to fire an Icicle from above to the target, dealing AoE physical damage based on 500% of their attack. This effect can occur every 10 seconds. Shatters can also be triggered prematurely to trigger any of these effects, but the cooldowns are still in place. Interesting, huh? huh? Well, <laughs> the four resonance is a little bit more interesting. Cryo and physical damage are increased by 30% to targets that are frozen. When frozen, decreases the defense of the target by 40%, so this is just buffed from before, and increases crit rate further by a total of 25. Again, only 25. When attacking a cryo or frozen applied target. The effect ends when cryo or frozen is removed. Now to say the triggering effects quick, the cryo damage has a 30% chance to freeze a target instantly without the need of hydro, so cryo damage can make freeze. Crazy. This trigger can increase further by another 15% if every target's not frozen yet. The second triggering effect, at the end of the duration of frozen, the enemy frozen will be dealt shatter damage. The shatter damage now deals 80% more physical damage, so basically a 80% increase in damage. And once shatter damage is dealt, it decreases cryo and physical resistance by 30% for 8 seconds. All shatters have a 40% chance to fire an icicle from above, dealing AoE physical damage based on 500% of their attack, but this effect can occur every 5 seconds, so a lot quicker. Shatter can be triggered prematurely. Blah blah blah. Now finally, the elemental shield break bonus is all elemental shields are frozen, and then shatter. Doesn't matter if it's pyro, it just freezes the shield. Simple enough. Sorry if I'm talking really fast, I am just trying to get this into a reasonable length. We still have two more resonances to go. But anyway, with this new identity or niche for cryo, this cryo resonance for mono element can focus totally on freeze without the addition of hydro, or can be unique with dealing physical damage as a hybrid, and also increasing cryo damage melt damage or something. So this already makes the physical cryo hybrid characters even stronger that we have. These resonances can focus on physical damage as an option rather than a must. So just imagine all these really cool cryo characters coming together like Shenha, Yula, Rosaria. It's just really cool. So anyway, I don't think this really breaks the game, but it's really strong, especially when you do a Eula team. I think it would be disgusting. So anyway, uh, that's Cryo Resonance. Okay, moving on to Anemo. This one is easy to guess what I made it based on since I talked about it in the last video a little bit. So I have some unexpected twists to it though. So what's your guess? All right, time's up. Attack speed, huh? Swirl? Anima damage bonus for our best by Xiao? Plunging damage? Hmm, yeah, I think a lot of those, but a little bit more. Let's get into it. So the three mono Anemo resonance, I know I call it something different every resonance, whatever. It increases Anemo damage bonus by 20% and swirl reaction damage by 40% and it increases attack speed further to a maximum of 10%. So remember, this is not stacked. Whenever I say further, it is just increased further. Now these triggering effects are what I'm proud of and they're very interesting. So the first triggering effect is when a swirl reaction is triggered, it decreases anemo resistance and the element of the swirl further by 5%, stacking up to a maximum of 30% with a duration of five seconds and can be refreshed. So this can be kind of a mono element team of that one element too. 
So the second triggering effect is additionally, once an element is swirled, creates a small tornado that can absorb an element to modify its damage and deals anima damage over time and any additional damage over time from an element. This tornado pulls enemies inside that are at least 8 meters near it. Once inside, they cannot leave the area for 6 seconds and it cannot be created again for 12 seconds after being created. Alright, and then the 4 Anemo Resonance. The Anemo damage bonus is increased further by 30%, and the Swirl Reaction damage is increased by 60 Remember, you can attack slimes, you can swirl other elements, whatever. <laughs> it increases attack speed further to 12% and a twister is centered around your active character and this twister pulls enemies inside within 8 meters of that active character. Any plunging attacks dealt inside this area have their damage increased by 50%. Any elemental damage swirled now cannot be immune to elemental resistance of that same type, dealing 50% effectiveness to previously immune targets. I'll get to that later. Now the triggering effect is one of my favorites. Any damage that is dealt to enemies inside the twister area have a 50% chance to trigger a special effect called Swift Slash. Swift Slash buffs your active character's attack speed and reduces stamina consumption by 2.5% for every trigger, stacking up to 25%. Now remember this is on top of the reworked Anemo Resonance bonus. When Swift Slash deals damage, it deals a new type of damage called Slash Damage. This Slash Damage deals a hybrid of Anemo and Physical Damage at the same time, and it decreases resistance of those both types at the same time by 5% of a trigger stacking up to 50% resistance shred. So think of it as kind of like a dual hit of Anemo and Physical. That's what I mean. Multi-hits can trigger Swish Slash... Swish... I can't speak. Anyway. Multi-hits can trigger this, there is no cooldown. And it lasts for 5 seconds when not triggered. And finally, the elemental shield break bonus is Swift Slash triggers can also deal damage to all elemental shields, dealing 10% of the maximum shield HP as true damage and decreases the defense of the shield by 30% for 5 seconds. So what do you think about this new slashing damage and this cool little triggering effect for the Nemo bonus? Resonances? Ah, I really like it a lot, and it makes a charge attack build more viable on characters like Jean and Xiao, as well as increases plunge damage, even some normal attack damage. So I think this also helps Anemo be the crowd control king without needing crowd control characters on the team. You just need Anemo buffers, so I think that's pretty neat. Though remember, even slimes and future immune enemies can actually be damaged by this swirl enhancement. So it actually damages them, but with a, you know, heavy resistance of 50%. But that's still big. So this, you know, makes up for the lack of swirl elements that may be prevalent in your party. Okay, well, I had a little bit more to say for an emo, but I'm losing my mind a little bit, and I'm sorry. I'm trying not to be really tired, but... Recording a 30 minute video is definitely tiring. So finally, we're gonna get to my favorite element, Geo. Now I will spare you the guessing game for this one because unless you wanna pause to guess, it doesn't really matter very much. Geo doesn't need very much right now, I'll be honest, because there's a lot of creative potential having to do with both shields and crystallized reactions. You may see some familiar things in here. The copium is real. <laughs> So, for the 3 Mono Geo Resonance, shielded characters now have their damage increased by 25%. I believe this is a further increase, it's not stacked, but whatever. The crystallized reactions now increase Geo damage and the element of the crystallized shield by 10% and stacks up to 3 times. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, I know. The first triggering effect is any crystallized reactions against elemental shields decrease the enemy's shield strength by 10% stacking up to 50% and sapping its power to strengthen your own shield strength by 10% up to a maximum of 50%. Shield strength sap has a duration of 8 seconds if no crystallized reaction is taking place. Absorbing damage of the same type of damage as your crystallized shield, so basically absorbing pyro, crystallized shield, pyro damage. Now restores your character's HP by 25% of the damage suffered. The second triggering effect is crystallized reactions now have a 50% chance to create an explosion, dealing damage of the crystallized element based on the Geo Reactor character's elemental mastery. 
Now that one might be really familiar. <laughs> okay, and then finally, drum roll. The four geo resonance, my unga bunga dream. It increases geo damage bonus by 25%. Shielded characters now have their damage and defense increased by a maximum of 30%, so this is a further increase, and Geo attacks decrease Geo resistance by 30% for 15 seconds. So this is all like a double Geo resonance, uh, two Geo resonance uh, bonus effect, so this is buffed. Now increases shield strength by a total of 40% from resonance bonuses. Shield strength also now scales into bonus Geo damage. Haha. -ha. Now, the first triggering effect is Geo Damage now has a 50% chance to heal the active character for 25% of damage dealt. Yes, I know this is powerful. Whatever. Triggering effect 2 is any crystallized reactions against elemental shields decrease the enemy's shield strength by 15%, stacking up to 60%, and sapping its power into your own up to a maximum of 60%. The shield strength sap has a duration of 8 seconds if no crystallized reactions taking place. Absorbing damage of the same type of your crystallized shield restores HP again by 30% of the damage suffered. Yes, I know this is nuts. Let's move on. The trigger effect 3 is technically a shield break bonus. All crystallized reactions now cause AoE elemental damage of that type to damage nearby enemies in explosion based on the elemental mastery of the Geo character and deal 5% of the shield's HP as true damage per crystallized reaction trigger. <sighs> so these mono Geo resonances basically make them the shield break kings, which should be their identity. I don't know why it's not that way. Anyway, this also benefits their own shields, making them almost unkillable. And no, this isn't totally biased because of my love for Geo. I just think Geo has the more fun and creative options to it. Mono Pyro Resonance always heals the Pyro characters, so why can't Geo nearly as be as powerful with no reaction bonuses? So, you know, Geo reduces damage and is defensive by nature, and currently has no true healers, so... Sorry, Goro and Ningguang, y'all don't count. And honestly, I don't really want a Geo healer, at least not one that just heals. So this resonance would be great to solve the lack of healing issues in case you're dealing with Geo Rift Hounds, especially if you're dealing with those, my goodness, or any blight effects. You may have seen some very indulgent crystallized buffs in here, and I can absolutely say that I am 100% for Crystallize being a good reaction, have you seen my channel? <laughs> if you are new here, though, I am very sorry, but hello, and goodbye, because that's all for this video. If this is your first video of mine, my greeting of hello there is still active, whatever that means. But please, check out my other videos on my channel and subscribe. I have a mixture of theories, reworked designs, discussion videos, stream highlights, and funny meme videos for you to enjoy. A wide variety that is mostly Genshin Impact related, but I hope to plan on delving into other games and communities of other games soon too. I just need to not lose subscribers first. <laughs> What are your thoughts about my reworked resonances and for the new mono resonance designs? Please be nice in the comments below, and if you liked the video, make sure you've liked it. I will see you later then, okay? Take care, everyone. Bye, y'all.